I have here two stolen pages from the formula for dermostatin that only my wife and I had access to. Now, we agreed that it was going to stay in the lab, and yet my butler found it in the trash in our house. Clearly, my wife wanted to doctor it. That is not true, Alan. If I had wanted to do that, I could have done it right there in the lab. But you didn't. You were afraid I would discover it too easily. Alan, that's a lie. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be thinking I'm enjoying myself, but nothing could be further from the truth. I don't think there's anything worse in this world than for a man to be betrayed by his own family in his own backyard. But what I couldn't figure out was, why would my wife want to betray me? What reason? If you look at the next page, there's the birth certificate of a young lady named Dawn Winthrop. She is the illegitimate daughter of my wife. She is also in love with my nephew, Ned Ashton. Now my wife did have a reason for this. She wanted me to fail, so when it came before the board of ELQ, you would turn the reins over to my nephew. This is absurd, Alan. On the contrary, I have proof that it's true. Not only did she want me to fail, she hired somebody to help her. Allow me to read this to you. I have done what you paid me to do, but things are getting too close for comfort. Don't expect to see me around anytime soon, Walt. This was addressed to my wife, Dr. Monica Quartermain, by a doctor who worked in my lab. He's not there anymore. He's left town. He has left his career behind him. Why do you think? How much did you pay him, Monica? This is, uh, this is ridiculous, Alan. I deny it. Except I do not deny the fact that Dawn is, yes, my daughter. I'm very proud of that. But I deny everything else. Monica, I have enough proof to send you to prison. What proof do you offer? Please don't tell us that it's your word, because your word is worth nothing. How could it be? She kept the fact that she had an illegitimate daughter from me our entire married life. Monica was set up, Alan. We all were. I know you wanted to put in your two cents, and that's just about what it's worth. They're in this together. His opinion is worthless. Look, I don't care about me. Just listen to Monica. Hear her out. I'm not listening to anything anymore. Let us put it before the board. Let's call for a vote and end this contest. Wait. Hold everything. Mother, I can put a stop to this insanity. Mother, what are you doing here? I wanted to spare you all this trouble. Why are you here? I have with me the one thing that will clarify things and put an end to all this ugliness and confusion. Uh, Jennings, if you please. Thank you. My husband's tackle box. This tackle box, ladies and gentlemen, was fished out of the sea after the fatal plane crash that claimed my husband's life. Mother, dear, I'm very, very sorry. The strain has been too much on her. What are you talking about? I'm talking about what is inside this box. It'll settle everything. But before I tell you what it is, I want the entire family present. Alan, please call your sister. Mother, please. Call Tracy, Alan. Mother, we can't hold everybody up like this. Believe me, it will be well worth the wait. Call your sister, Alan. The sooner she gets here, the sooner we can get on with it. I still can't find Tracy. I've called all over town, left messages everywhere. Oh, very good, dear. She's bound to get one of them. We can't keep imposing on these busy people. Try to push for a vote and railroad grandmother. Lila can hold her own. Monica, this is your doing, isn't it? What are you talking about, Alan? This is just another conspiracy, a stall tactic. Oh. Back off, Alan. You've just handed Mother another sob story, so she'll be on your side. She did no such thing. All we're doing is waiting for your sister to arrive. My sister has nothing to do with this, Mother. <laughs> Tracy is Edward's daughter, just as you are his son. <clears throat> And before I open this box and reveal what's in it, I want all my family to be present. Mother, you can't be serious. Excuse me, there was a call for Dr. Quartermain. Oh, finally, word from Tracy. When's she going to be here? For Dr. Monica Quartermain. You're oh. wanted at General Hospital. There's an emergency. Oh. What, something else again now? I didn't plan on this, Alan. I have to go. Go ahead, dear. We, we won't start anything until you get back. Mother, I mean it. This has gone <clears throat> far enough. We cannot keep imposing on these people. Do I hear anyone complaining? That's not the point. We don't know when Monica's going to come back. We may not hear from Tracy for hours. We can't ask these busy people to keep waiting. Especially, we don't even know what we're waiting for. Leave her alone, Alan. You stay out of this. No, I won't. I won't let you badger her like this. I don't wish to seem inconsiderate, but this is a very important matter. And it affects not only our own family, but the future of the LQ. You keep saying that, Mother, but with all due respect, can you please tell me what on earth does Father's fishing tackle box have to do with anything? Alan, Alan, such impatience. 
Your father never caught a fish like that. We're not talking about fishing, though. It was the way your father cleared his head. And when he did what he did, his head was very clear indeed. Mother, before we all go mad, will you please, please tell us what are you talking about? <sighs> all right. I'll tell you this much. I won't allow it to be read until Tracy and Monica are here, but this box contains the last codicil that your father added to his will. Oh, Mother, you can't it's be serious. It's signed and witnessed shortly before he died. Damn it, they don't know how long Monica's gonna be in surgery and nobody can find Tracy anywhere. Mother, how long is this gonna go on? We could be here all night. I'm sure that everyone concerned will find the wait worthwhile. I'm in no hurry. I know the board members are willing to wait around a little longer. Why don't you stay out of this? It's none of your business. Ned is a member of this family, Alan. And Edward's last and final codicil affects us all. Mother, if you've read the codicil, why don't you just tell us what's in it? That's not what Edward wants. How do you know what he wants, Mother? He's dead. I'm sorry. Mother, please, you have... Alan, I don't want to hear another word. Now, it's not absolutely necessary for Monica to be here, but no one is going to know what is inside this codicil until Tracy arrives. Another codicil? You mean he wrote another codicil after the one he wrote, leaving everything to Ned? That's right. I found it in your father's fishing tackle box. His fishing tackle box? The one that he took with him on his trip, the one that they found I in the plane I understand, wreckage, Ned. Mother. We have had that fishing tackle box for months. What on earth made you suddenly go to the fishing tackle box to look for a new codicil? Tell me, Mother, why? A little bird told me to. Right. Could we get on with this, please, Mrs. Oh, Quartermain? I'm sorry. Well, now, this is Edward's last and final codicil. Fortunately... He put it in this uh, waterproof package. And luckily, the fishing tackle box that uh, he put it in was recovered after the plane crash. Mother, would you like me to read that? Don't be ridiculous. I'll read it. Neither of you will read it. These are your father's last words. And I want you to be quiet and listen. <sighs> I'm writing this from the plane on my way to the Bahamas. My lawyer is here beside me and will witness this document as soon as I've finished. It is my last wish, and it is to supersede the codicil I left behind in Port Charles, the one leaving everything to Ned. I'm sorry to have made Ned the brunt of a bad joke. A joke? Quiet, Mother. Unfortunately, I'm afraid the joke is on me, since we've just been informed by the pilot that our aircraft is in trouble. I, I may make it to the Bahamas. I may not. In any case, if I don't, I hope this last codicil will explain. Mother... But are you sure you don't want somebody else to read that? No, Edward would want me to. I, I don't know how much time we have, so I'll try to be brief. I wrote the other codicil, leaving everything to Ned, and I gave enough hints for Alan and Tracy to be sure they'd go snooping around my lawyer's office the moment I left town. It was my intention to shake you up, children. I wanted to see how far you'd go, Alan, to take ELQ from Ned. And I wanted to find out how hard Tracy would fight you. I wanted to challenge you both to prove yourselves as quarter mains. I thought I'd be home in a month <laughs> to see which one of you had, would win. Of course. He'd know we'd find out that he left everything to Ned. He knew I'd never stand for it. Will you let Grandmother finish? Thank you, Ned. I'm running out of time, and I want you all to promise me that you'll never fly with this incompetent idiot airline. <laughs> At any rate, in the hope that you will all realize how much I love you, in spite of what you may have thought, I'm leaving ELQ to both Alan and Tracy in equal shares. Equal? What? You mean Alan and Tracy will both be running ELQ? Uh, th there's more. One other thing. I've grown quite fond of my grandson, Ned Ashton. He's a young man with his head screwed on straight. Quite amazing, considering his parentage. Oh. I hope you'll forgive me, Ned, if, if I've caused you any grief. I'm appointing my grandson, Ned Ashton, as treasurer of ELQ. Treasurer! The rest is uh, somewhat personal and has no financial bearings. I'll be damned. He did believe in me. And in me. He loved you both very dearly. And you too, Ned. 
Now, I hope this will put an end to the horrible bickering. And I trust that you will do as your father wished. And pull yourselves together and start behaving like a family. I'm gonna run ELQ. The hell you are. You heard the codicil, you're both gonna run it equally. I could care less. I'm Edward's son. I'm the rightful heir to ELQ. Ha <laughs> ha! Would you listen to him? The rightful heir. Get over yourself. This is not the Ming dynasty. That will be enough from both of you. Listen, mother. Enough! It all sounds perfectly fine to me. Let me tell you something. If I have to run ELQ with Tracy, I can live with that, but I'll be damned if Ned Ashton's going to be the treasurer. Well, there's nothing you can do about it unless you'd like to resign. Listen, handing him the funds for ELQ is like putting a fox in a chicken coop. He tried to destroy me just over this lousy contest. And weren't you trying to destroy me, too, Uncle Alan? I haven't even finished with you yet. I, for one, think he's going to be a fabulous treasurer. Yeah, I'll bet you do. We've had our ups and downs, but we always look out for one another. Forget it, Mother. The only thing I'll be looking out for is the best interest of ELQ. Well... That's what I meant. I want you all to remember, Alan, Tracy, and Ned, that this is Edward's last wish. And I do hope you'll honor his memory by trying to behave civilly to each other. Of course, Mother. I will. Good. I can't tell you how happy I am about the two of you working together. And promise me that from now on, you'll both bury the hatchet. I will. Me too. Please have Mrs. Huntington's doctor call General Hospital, Fort Charles, New York, and tell him it is urgent. Thank you very much. Monica. Alan, I have an emergency. Listen, I just want to tell you about the outcome of the board meeting. Oh, I know the outcome. You raked on and me over the goal. No, no, listen to me for a second. My father wrote a new codicil to the will. What are you talking about? Alan? There was a new codicil to the will that my father wrote. It was found in the fishing tackle box that from the plane wreckage. Edward wrote another codicil before the plane crash? Yes, and it's just as well that he did, because he never really meant for Ned to have everything. I, I don't understand this, Alan. He wanted to see how me and Tracy would react to this. The whole thing was just a joke on his part. Well, I certainly didn't find it any laughing matter, having you rip me to shreds. No, no, I know that. Just, just listen to me. Listen to what he did. He divided ELQ Industries equally between me and Tracy. Unfortunately, he also made Ned the treasurer. Why are you telling me this, Alan? Because I thought that you were the only person in this world who would understand how much this means to me. Yes. You're going to be rich. That's what you want. I don't care about being rich, Monica. I'm rich now. I wanted his love and approval. That's why I fought so hard to win the contest. And now I've got it. He did care about me. He did believe in me. Too bad, Alan, that you couldn't have felt the same way about your wife. You think maybe it's possible we could just put all this behind us? Oh! Oh, you mean you changed your mind now? You don't believe that I was out to sabotage you for the sake of Dawn? Listen to me. I never really wanted to believe in that in the first you place. You wanted to believe that I was a thief and a liar. You humiliated me and you embarrassed me and Dawn. And I am going to prove that all of those allegations were false. Monica, Monica you please, got it's... what you wanted. Now I'm going to get what I want. And if you think I'm joking, you're dead wrong. Monica. Seven floor OR. Dr. Oh. Bowman to seven floor OR. Poor Alan. Oh, hi, Lucy. Hi, listen, it seems to me that no matter what you do, she's never satisfied, is she? What? Look, I'm sorry, Lucy. I just can't talk to you right now. Um, would you excuse me, please? Hi. Oh, hi, Dad. You look exhausted. Yeah, I've been told, yes. Well, I was up all night with Iona Huntington. How is she? Not good. Sorry to hear about that. Mm. Can I talk to you for a minute? Um, okay. Yeah. Listen, I heard about the new codicil. Yeah, Grandfather dropped quite a bombshell. Maybe it's Edward to drop one even from the grave. So how does it feel being uh, named treasurer? Feels good. I just hope I can do a good job. Well, Edward would not have appointed you if he didn't think you were capable of it. Thanks. You think Alan will forget all this mess about you and Don trying to sabotage him now that he's in control of ELQ? Alan humiliated the three of us, Ned, and I'm not going to let it go without clearing the whole thing up. How? By revealing who the real culprit is, Tracy. Well, if I find out my mother had something to do with this, Monica, I would... Ned, look, I know that she is your mother, but the whole mess reeks of Tracy. You do what you have to. I'll support you. There's one good thing that came out of it, though. I can tell the whole world now that Dawn is my daughter. 
She's a lot like you, you know. Really? Yeah. Honest, loyal, and smart, beautiful. Well, thank you very much. I am very proud of her. A lot of things make sense now. Like what? I like when she took off to New York when she thought you and I slept together. Oh, boy, yeah. I mean, you mentioned what she must have thought, thinking her mother was... Hey, don't blame yourself. I mean, Dawn wasn't even in the picture at the time. I know, it's just that I, I wanted our relationship to be open and honest. When it lies between us. You're not going to tell her we did sleep together. No, I'm not. Go ahead. No, I think that would really destroy things. As much as I hate keeping anything from her, in this case, I absolutely have to. And I absolutely have to leave. Bye. Ned's really eager to help out with the party, too. You know, I think that you and Ned... You're welcome. ...are the only people that really understand how important this party is. Well, of course we do. I want to make up for all of the birthdays that I've missed with her. This is going to be the biggest and best birthday coming out party that poor Charles has ever seen. You're dying right here. <laughs> Monica, you... have you seen Dawn? I've been looking everywhere for her. No, and if I had, you'd still get the same answer. I just want to talk to her. Talk to her, Alan, or call her more names, insult her. To tell you the truth, I want to apologize to her. Oh, apologize? What do you want to do? Sweep all this scandal under the carpet, Mr. Co-chair person? I don't deserve this, Monica. Neither does Dawn, Alan. And I'm warning you, I'm very, very proud of my daughter. And I'm going to let the whole world know. You've done nothing but hurt her, and from now on, I want you to stay away from her. Okay. Cruise, aren't we? Yeah.